So we are we are very fortunate that we have His Grace Gauranga Prabhu with us for this new segment of IYS. This is called as IYS Samvad. So Gauranga Prabhu, he is a he is an IITian. He is a monk for three decades. He is being a pillar of our community and giving Krishna consciousness to so many youth. And also he is a GBC and director for GV. So we are having a conversation IYS Samvad with Gauranga Prabhu. Okay. So the first question we have in this podcast, Prabhuji, is that uh, every, every person has his own story of coming, every devotee has his own story of coming to Krishna Consciousness. And uh, you know, how you come to Krishna Consciousness by Krishna's arrangement, it's usually a very interesting story. So we would want to know something interesting about how you came to Krishna Consciousness and your story of coming to Krishna Consciousness. Yeah, so I was in IIT and I had a room partner who was a very pious kind of a seeker and used to keep visiting various spiritual organizations and uh, searching different gurus. So, you know, he used to go to various babas who always had a surname Ananda, this Ananda, that Ananda, but my name was also Ananda. So I told him, when you come to your conclusion, then you let me know. So then suddenly one time I heard him chanting Hare Krishna Mantra. And his Hare Krishna Mantra continued on for one year. So I was surprised that, hey, you usually change mantra every few weeks. This time your mantra is not changing. So he said, I have found out now what is the conclusion of Vedic scriptures. So then... Uh, he said that there is a weekly Bhagavad Gita lecture and you can join us there. So I was not interested but I had a neighbor in my same wing who was a Marwadi businessman from Calcutta. So he went, he came back and he told me, Rare, there is a speaker who's coming. You know, it was Bhakti Rasamrat Maharaj. He was that time named Devamrat Prabhu. That you know, it's a, it's a English speaking sadhu. <laughs> he gave lecture in English. I said, hey, sadhus never give in English. He said, no, no, are you English? Mein bolte hai. And number two, he is an MBA. He is an MBA from a top college. And number three, he was working in Standard Chartered Bank. I said, Standard Chartered Bank and sadhu kya bol raha hai? And fourthly, he drives Maruti car and come. <laughs> so the main reason I went was because this Marwadi guy was selling the idea to me. So I said, Are, other few people are sentimental, but you are a pakka businessman. And you are impressed, means let me go and see who is this Adbhut Sadhu, who is speaking in English, who is a banker also, and he comes driving. So that was how I first went to the program and when I heard Bhakti Rasamrat Maharaj speak, you know, so it was very attractive and then gradually once you start associating, then you become more deeply connected. So that was my first introduction to Krishna consciousness and then through Radhanath Swami I got introduced kind of much later, but it was mainly through uh, this so my friend was instrumental in bringing me. He is the one who attracted Radhesham Prabhu, Paramams Prabhu, many others. You know, so he very much was instrumental in bringing me to Krishna consciousness. So I'm always grateful to him. Thing one. So, Prabhuji, like uh, generally when the youth they come to Krishna consciousness. They have like a lot of cultural shift, what they were practicing earlier and now what they, after coming to Krishna Consciousness, the, the way we offer Dandava, the way we put a Tilak, the way we say certain things, Hare Krishna, Hare Bo, something. So they find a cultural shift, cultural differences. So like you yourself are coming from such a traditional conservative Shri Vaishnava family. You are such a wonderful culture of Shri Vaishnavas. 
at the same time then after you uh, after you went to iit iit has a different culture iit bombay specifically where the i heard uh, where the subjects uh, some sub, uh, expert of a subject is called as he's a god of maths so that kind of culture shift and then coming to krishna consciousness there's a lot of culture shift and uh, lifestyle changes so how did you dealt with this change yeah so yes i i i'm not coming from a shri vaishnava family i come from a smartha family uh ayer palakkad ayer so it is shaivites supposed to be but from my mother's side from my mother's side we are priests of lakshmi narayan temple in kalpati and from my father's side we are priests from vardaraj temple in alambalam in palakkad district so from both my father's and mother's side our family tradition is temple priest but i became inspired to become a temple priest only after meeting a jewish person from chicago radhanath swami <laughs> <laughs> so you may be from some background and you know recently only i went and saw all those temples in detail then i realized that uh, you know i am coming from such a traditional temple priest background but then of course iit means so a totally different i don't i can't I, i can't even call it culture or vulture i don't know what to say <laughs> so people sleep in the morning all night they are up and do all kinds of other stuff you know which is unmentionable but ultimately they are also like i had friends in hostel who would take bath once in a week <laughs> and they will come on sunday very fresh smiling bole yaar khush lag raha kya baat hai bole snan kiya so that's another kind of culture and one friend of mine didn't take bath for 6 months it was a record so i don't want to you know spoil your consciousness by sharing some of those things but what attracts a person to krishna consciousness at least what attracted me was the philosophy the philosophy of krishna consciousness the clarity of how the soul's journey is defined over several generations and then the culture becomes a supporting feature the culture becomes a supporting feature you don't you don't uh, join a university or a college or a company because of how the campus looks like you join a university or a company based on the credibility of that particular institution then how the building looks like how the aesthetics are that is additional so that's how culture is an additional feature and yes in krishna consciousness the most attractive part of the culture is that everybody is trying to be a servant and trying to serve and inspire others which is different from the outside culture of pulling others down so therefore uh, you know when i joined i was the only ivs boy i was the first ivs boy in 1992 so i remember our dwarkadish prabhu vishaka mata ji they were all staying in temple they were grahasthas and i would come on friday you know evening so when i would come they all knew friday evening i will come so they would all keep the you know evening sandhya bhog prasad for me la iit se ladka raha hai usko khilao you know and then of course next day morning we would pack up and go to iit for preaching and all of that but the loving reciprocation between the devotees in that community was very attractive and uh, you know tilak and this and that and everything it's all changing nowadays when i was going to ayodhya whole flight was chanting jay shri ram jay shri ram 
So we could not have imagined 30 years back when we joined that this will be state of India. Flight is taking off, everybody is chanting Ram Dhun. Flight is landing, Jai Sri Ram, Jai Sri Ram. Pilot is coming out and air hostess is telling Jai Sri Ram and everybody is going out. So, over a consistent effort of many years, culture changes. The sadhus were given so much of respect during the Ayodhya opening. I was part of the 3,000 sadhus who were invited. 10 to 15 phone calls came from the government. Swami ji, kab aare hai? Swami ji, kab ja rahe hai? Rehne ki vyavastha ho gai kya? A vehicle and a police constable and protocol for every sadhu who was invited, was provided. So for me, this was a culture shock. <laughs> because I am used to be thrown out of colleges, banned in hostels. This is how my life has gone. Tadi par. I preached in JJ Grand Medical College. Koi JJ se hai kya? Nee, goh to preacher hai, student koi hai kya? Ha, to I was preaching in JJ from 1994 to 2009, 15 years. All 15 years I was banned in hostel. There was some warden who did not like Hare Krishna. And he had given strict warning. If this Hare Krishna is seen, throw, him, throw them out. So all 15 years I was banned. There would be a group which will go ahead and see the warden is there or not. Not there, then they'll give signal. Siti bajayenge ao. Then I'll go, jump here, go there. So I'm used to playing hide and seek in all these places. My own college, IIT, I was thrown out. Police came. The dean brought the police and threw me out, took me to the police station. So this is how we have been treated for spreading Sanatan Dharma in this country. So if we see a temple being opened and the whole country chanting Ram's name, why we will not support it? We will definitely support it. So therefore, the culture of this country is changing. The Prime Minister is going for 11 days doing various kinds of austerities and publicly demonstrating that being part of rituals is nothing wrong. It is perfectly auspicious to do that. That's the kind of example this country needs. Otherwise, we have gone through a lot of nonsense, a lot of trauma, a lot of insult. And now we are very happy that two years ago, the IAM Nagpur director, Professor Bhimrai Maitri, he visited the Eco Village and he saw the GEV and he told me, why don't you become visiting faculty in IAM Nagpur for life management skills? So I said, how can you have a professor in IIM coming and teaching in Saffron? Will IIM accept Saffron professor? Maitri sir said, if chief minister can be in Saffron, why not professor? <laughs> so therefore, overall the culture is changing. And we have to fight against the atheistic forces and we have to make sure that Sanatan Dharma traditions are established. Srila Prabhupada gave us the blueprint and I tell all my friends who are active politically, Tumara kaam hai ladai, hamara kaam hai padai. Aap ladai karo, jab aapko confusion hoga, kyun lad rahe hai, main <laughs> so thank you so much Prabhuji for that profound understanding. Aapka naam kya hai? Mera naam Rishi. My name is Rishi by the way. Rishi. Kya karte? A student hai. Master student. Kaha pe? Uh, Mumbai University. Isme? A history. Master in history. Kaun sa history? Uh, right now world history and China. 
भागवत पुराण भी तो हिस्ट्री है That's that's for my PhD. Huh? That's for my PhD maybe. बी हाँ वहाँ पर तुम थोड़ा पुरान वुरान डालो आपका प्रोफेसर लोग को थोड़ा बेविल्डर करो पॉडकास्ट इज टू वे सो थैंक यू सो मच प्रभु जी फॉर दैट प्रोफाउंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग and uh, we have seen how strong that spirit was so another thing so many youths in the house many youths and uh, a feature of young age is that mind goes through a lot of turbulence not just young age prak sharir vimoshanat till the time of death mind will be troubling everybody so don't expect monkey to change its behavior monkey will remain monkey till end so uh, for an understanding of uh, how to deal with this turbulent mind so are there any instances from when you were young hmm? when you were young and when you had faced certain turbulences or you had seen people face certain turbulences are there any instances of how can we uh, handle turbulences how can a practicing sadhaka especially it's very difficult to handle uh, the turbulences of mind for a practicing sadhaka every day is turbulence so i remember when i was sent to the kitchen to serve that was the first turbulence <laughs> the turbulence still continues so i remember that afternoon when i would enter the kitchen and i was only 22 years old 93 i joined 22 23 whatever so very young and uh, i would expect some people to come and help but nobody would come in the afternoon so i would become angry so kitchen is a dangerous place with knives and everything <laughs> <laughs> so you can't afford an angry guy in the kitchen it's a place where you can have serious fights which can be injurious so i was in angry mood so i took the knife and keep hitting the bhopla <laughs> and then i went and screamed at my in charge that nobody is coming here and you are sleeping peacefully what the hell is going on get lost so then he came and you know kind of pacified but because prasad is something you cannot postpone so whether you are in good mood or bad mood you have to cook so then gradually i thought that i have to find a way to escape this kitchen so someone said aap prachar badhao to mukt kar denge so i started increasing my program from once a week to twice a week to thrice a week four times a week five six seven days a week then my in charge told me lagta hai bahut prachar badh gaya hai kitchen se break le lo मैंने कहा आप कहते हो तो ले लेता हूँ सो आई थॉट आई हैव एस्केप्ड बट वेन कृष्णा वॉन्ट्स टू ब्रिंग यू बैक ही विल हैव इज ओन वेज सो इन 2007 थाउजेंड सेवन अगेन राधानाथ स्वामी ब्रॉट मी बैक बिकॉज आई हैड टेकन अ वाव नेवर टू कम बैक आफ्टर द फर्स्ट थ्री ईयर्स ऑफ ट्रॉमा बट देन सर्कमस्टेंसेस वेर सच दैट आई हैड टू अगेन कम बैक and uh, you know things are still continuing so the biggest trauma is when you have your own plan and you are not ready to align with krishna's plan so krishna's plan minus my plan is equal to fear so therefore if krishna's plan becomes equal to my plan then there is fearlessness abhay charana ravindare that requires time effort energy and like that in iit suddenly the preaching was stopped you are thrown out it's traumatic it's very very heartbreaking then devotees leave the ashram that is very heartbreaking you are misunderstood that is very heartbreaking we are in management we take decisions and so many things happen 
So, I mean, there is no end because the number of activities which I have handled, the number of various fights, conflicts, challenges, upheavals is something which I cannot even explain. So there is no end to the number of things which have happened, which have been challenging and difficult, but advancement in Krishna consciousness depends on your ability to take responsibility. So one thing is that if you have to develop good Vaishnava relationships, Sambandha, then Sambandha depends on four things. First, you have to have Samman. Even if there is difference of opinion with others, have Samman, respect. Then when you have Samman, people start coming closer. Then you offer Seva, service to them, to try to please them, help them, support them. Then when there is some seva and people develop faith, then sneha develops, affection develops. But problem is when there is sneha or affection, sometimes there is familiarity which breeds contempt. Atiparachayat abhagyat satat gamanat anadaro bhavati malaya bhilla purandari chandanam kurukashta indanam kurude. So when there is familiarity, it breeds contempt. So sneha many times leads to disrespect and contempt. So after sneha, a very important thing is seema. You should know the boundaries of your relationship. So when there is samman, seva, sneha and seema, then you will be able to maintain good sambandha and therefore in spite of having taken up multiple responsibilities across multiple activities in multiple domains over 30 years, I have tried to follow these four principles so that there is at least a minimum decorum of sambandha in spite of all these various upheavals which may come. So therefore the important thing is when you take responsibility, perform a service, what is the number of mistakes you do? <coughs> How many Vaishnavas hearts you break? And, you know, what are some of the heartbreaks you go through? So these three things, if you minimize, then overall your experience in Krishna consciousness is pretty positive. So that's about, you know, your heartbreaks question. Okay. Yes, so, Prabhuji, Prabhuji, thank like, you so much. Uh, yeah, you were mentioning, Prabhuji, about the relationship, Sambandha. So, in your IRE times, how did, the, how did this relationship with your devotee friends helped you, or the senior guidance helped you to come out of certain kind of turbulences? Uh, any instances you want to mention? During? During the IIT times. IIT? When you were youth. Yeah. Uh, in IIT times, we had a good group of devotee friends and our biggest challenge was food. Because in hostel, they were onion and garlic. So one of my, the, the friend who brought me to Krishna conscious was kind of a fanatic guy. So he suddenly one day took a decision, we will not eat in the mess food and we will eat only boiled food. And he ordered in the mess to give boiled food for us. So five, six of us were eating boiled food. I was seriously angry. And I really thought I have come to Krishna consciousness before time. <laughs> that guy was transcendental, I was not. Then one more of our colleague, Paramams Prabhu, you know, he was a mess in charge at that time in IIT. So we convinced him you have the power to remove onion and garlic from the food because he is the mess in charge. So he quietly removed onion and garlic and told the cooks not to put onion and garlic. One week, the entire food in the hostel was without onion and garlic. Nobody found out. It would have continued. But the onion and garlic dealer 
उसके पेट पे लात पड़ा सो ही केम एंड ब्राइब द कुक्स टू मैसअप द फूड सो दैट स्टूडेंट्स विल कंप्लेन एंड फाइंड आउट सो ही स्टार्टेड मैसिंग अप द फूड क्वालिटी टू सच एन एक्सटेंट दैट स्टूडेंट स्टार्टेड कंप्लेनिंग एंड आज द कुक्स वॉट एपन एंड दे सेट ऑनियन गार्लिक बंद करा दिया कौन बंद करा रे मोले साहब ने बंद करा दिया मैस इन चार्ज सो द होल हॉस्टल स्टार्टेड पुटिंग पोस्टर्स एवरी दे एवरीवेयर हाय हाय मोले हरे कृष्णा के बैंड बजाओ ये करो वो करो सो देन वी रियलाइज दैट ऑल्सो कुड नॉट हेल्प सो देन परमस प्रभु सेड फरगेट ऑल दिस मेस वी विल ओनली कुक मैंने कहा क्या बात कर रहे यार हाउ विल वी कुक वी आर स्टडिंग हियर हु विल कुक ही सेट आई विल कुक I said, "Have you ever cooked?" He said, "No, I have seen my mother cook." I said, "Baap re baap, ye pagal aadmi hai yaar." So, this other guy took me to his home in Matunga, and he entered his mother's kitchen with a bag and started putting utensils in the bag. His mother said, "Kya kar raha hai?" Well, ham log cooking karenge. His mother came out and started arguing with me. "Arey, kya hai? Ye vada pao stall banayega kya? Ki padhai karega?" So I was thinking मैं भी यही सोच रहा हूँ लेकिन वो जबरदस्ती लेके आया एंड वी एक्चुअली स्टार्टेड कुकिंग देर इन आवर हॉस्टल रूम एंड आई वॉज इन चार्ज ऑफ क्लीनिंग द वेसल्स एंड यूटेंसिल्स इन द हॉस्टल यू नो बाथरूम इन द इन द सेम फ्लोर ऑल माई ओल्ड फ्रेंड्स वेर लुकिंग एट मी बोले क्या कर रहा है यार वॉट इज गोइंग ऑन बट वी वेर हैविंग अ सर्टन कन्विक्शन वी डिट नो वॉट वॉज कंट्रोलिंग अस वी डिट हैव base and voice and all these things with paid cooks and all of that but we were driven by a passion and we continued so for two semesters we did this then of course i passed out they continued and then you know so many other things happened after that but the thing is it's not how much assets which you have but what is your attitude and conviction in krishna consciousness which takes you to the next level because assets and other things will follow your attitude so if you don't have the conviction and attitude all these assets and all will be of no use so that's most important so all of you here should not depend on doors to open but you should knock on the door so hard that the doors are forced to open and that's what krishna consciousness is all about so another interesting question is uh what does a day in like in the life of gorang prabhu look like a day in my life yeah <laughs> a day in different city and different place looks different so from 93 to 2000 almost Five, six. I had a very steady life, where I hardly would leave uh, Chopati Temple. And uh, between '93 to 2000, I had a very fixed schedule of studying Bhagavatam and then going out and preaching in the evenings. Chopati was a small temple. We didn't have much money. We didn't have much projects or anything. Just preaching, and mostly I was doing youth preaching. so it was very steady life and uh, the temple um, management and radhanath swami were very kind enough to give me a small you know attic place in the dt room loft above where i would sit and study for many hours so shrimad bhagavatam was my favorite companion for many many years i would study many hours 4 hours 5 hours 6 hours and uh, go in the evening so i had different programs every evening and i would speak so life was very simple straightforward very purifying very elevating then in 2000 2001 radhanath swami asked us to get involved in some administration more then radha giridhari had his company apar infotech that made an exit in 2001 2 period where money came and when the money came then radhanath swami had a desire to expand and you know renovate chopati temple so bolas classes and all these other properties were acquired renovation happened 
pink marble stone was coming from outside. The inside temple hall was renovated with uh, Italian marble, then the wooden flooring and the wooden backdrop, the ceiling of Chopati temple, you know, the DT room, and so many things happened in the 2001 to 2006, 7 period, ending with the Govinda's restaurant, the matchless gift shop, the base classes, the new kitchen, the new DT kitchen, then, you know, the, the Vrindavan forest in the backside, more guest rooms added. So Radhanath Swami was very much wanting to transform Chopati into a place which would be attractive to South Mumbai people even when he is not so active. Because we really did not want any renovation because we told Maharaj, you are here, we are here, and you and us will live happily ever after. So why do we need some renovated place? Maharaj said, Baba, now it's okay, but in future, people will want to come to a decent place, a nice place. Otherwise, it was very pathetic looking. Chopati temple was dirty. Facilities were not there. It was pretty, you know, horrible looking place that time. So when that period started, so that period was the period when, of course, in 95 to 2000 period, I was working closely with Maharaj, mainly for youth preaching. You know, I, I brought Maharaj to IIT to stay two or three times overnight. He has stayed in IIT campus. He has been in IIT programs, spent time with the devotees in the base. So uh, then 2001 onwards, he kind of invited me to take more responsibility in administration and construction and then Actually, Chaupati previously was designed in such a way that Brahmachari should only study and teach. That was the original idea of Chaupati. But Maharaj was impatient. He wanted things fast. And the team of Grihasthas who were leading the construction was slow. So I became impatient. So I kind of jumped into that fire. And I brought in Sri Chaitanya and few others also into the fire. And gradually, the breed of the brahmacharis who were only doing studying and preaching changed. So I take responsibility for that, you know, change in the culture. And uh, after that, things were never the same. So many others joined who were already in tune with that. So in that 2001 to 2006 period, the whole Chopati went through a complete new look of how everything uh, became more friendly for the devotees to come and experience. That was the idea. So we thought that this is over, so then Maharaj will be there, we will be there and we'll chant and dance and be happy with each other forever. Then suddenly Maharaj started talking about Govardhan village. So that was quite uh, traumatic because Chopati was happy with what they are doing. We were happy with Maharaj, he was happy with us, youth preaching was great, congregation preaching was great. There was no need for that Govardhan village project. But Radhanath Swami was looking at Prabhupada's vision that Prabhupada wanted Westerners to come to Krishna consciousness and after Prabhupada when 5,500 disciples of Prabhupada, only 20 Indians were there, 108 temples in 1977, Prabhupada departed, only 5 were in India. 103 temples were outside India. So when Prabhupada departed, preaching in the West was here, preaching in India was here. In the 80s, leaders in the West fell down and devotees left Iskon and Gradually, Gopal Krishna Maharaj, Jayapatak Maharaj, Bhakti Charu Maharaj, Radhanath Swami added such stability in India that India started growing. That by early 2000s, India preaching became here and the West became here. So Radhanath Swami in 2004 started three projects to try to bring Western people back to ISKCON. The three projects were first Bhakti Center, the first was Journey Home, the book. Because by reading that, he thought Westerners will be attracted. Okay, when they get attracted, where do they go? In New York, he started Bhakti Center. And then after 
coming there and getting transformed when they want to make a pilgrimage to india he wanted a place in india where the westerners could come and experience krishna consciousness because they will get lost in vrindavan so he wanted to create a vrindavan which is friendly for the westerners so that was govardhan eco village so chaupati did not really need gev in 2009 but america and europe and the people there needed gev for their spiritual survival and transformation and there was a disconnect in communication there because we in chaupati could not really understand why the hell this project is going on and that communication took some time for me also to understand but now when i see people coming from the west an example university of utah 15 students came to gv few years ago third day of their visit 10 out of 14 come to mangalarti and then i asked them why you came and they said we have been touring gv for the last 3 days and when we see that you have designed everything in gv with so much of respect for nature we were curious what is the philosophy and practice and religion of these people which makes them so sensitive towards nature therefore we came to experience your morning prayer in the mangalarti so like that last year will smith he came and he spent a week here this year his wife and his daughter came and his wife is sitting and writing notes from ramayana and i am maharaj is speaking every day i was speaking i cannot imagine bollywood actress sitting and taking notes on ramayana and she is chanting 16 rounds and she is worshiping sita ram at her home and you know she is asking questions and then i thought we have finished the classes then she asking extra class on you know pralad maharaj we want to hear more about this every day 5 o'clock they would go and have morning program in different forests in vrindavan you know so she was there her daughter was there both have almost 11 million followers jada smith willow smith and then one more london lauren london another actress from hollywood she came she also has 11 million followers so i am sitting and giving you know ramayan katha to this 30 million followers of these and they have put on their instagram also if you go and see on the instagram they have put the posts so we cannot imagine all of these people coming there so maharaj had the vision that this is for india it is an extra holy place so westerners started coming right from 2012 indian started coming after covid <laughs> and as holy places numbers have grown so in govardhan eco village also last december january we had 5000 people on 30th december 5000 on 31st and 5000 on 1st this year 2023 december and 24 january 1st we had 15000 on 30th 15000 on 31st and 16000 on 1st and now for practically every sunday our numbers has gone to 15 20000 so it's all indian people who are coming but i am still not satisfied because so many of them are busy taking selfies only so i am wondering you know how to make them really take to the process very deeply but overall there is a vision it takes time for us to understand the vision but i must say that since this is an iyas yatra the first iyas yatra i attended was tirupati in 2011 right my i didn't attend before that 2010 and 9 i don't remember attending iyas yatra i have been attending from 2011 it was in tirupati that was a time in uh, i think july august or something we attended and our construction was going on at gb in full swing so practically the entire gb was created by devotees who were part of different bases we have devotees from bandirvan base we have devotees from talwan base 
We have devotees from Brindavan base. We have devotees from, you know, the other bases. So they were all like, they joined in 2009-10 and they came straight. You know, and I joined in 93. So there was a 17 years difference between myself and those who joined. But practically the entire GEV has been created by IYS Mumbai only. So I tell the preachers that you have preached to these boys and trained them in your basis. Right? So Prem Kishore Prabhu has cultivated Devarshi Narada in Bhandirvan base. So he has brought him to Krishna consciousness, but he has not tested him in service. But I have tested these boys in service, in ground reality, in the heat of summer, in the cold of winter, in the peak of rainy season. And I have seen each one of these boys cultivated by the IYS preachers is a pure diamond who have stead, stood the test of time and come out with flying colors. So therefore, you know, I have great faith and confidence in the kind of quality of devotees who are being cultivated through this IYS. Because the GEV was an extremely difficult project. It was an extremely challenging project. I have not even begun speaking about what we have gone through to create the GEV. That, has, that conversation has never happened. But it was so difficult, so challenging, so tough. These were young boys who had joined ISKCON to be preachers in city. They were suddenly, forcibly, against their desire, shunted to a village in the middle of nowhere, against their will. They were uncomfortable. They had challenges. But they did not complain. They tolerated and supported because they wanted to be part of a higher vision of Radhanath Swami. And therefore, I'm eternally grateful to all the IYS preachers. And I don't even think you know what is the quality of the products you have created because the fruits of what you have created has been tested and tasted by Radhanath Swami and myself. So we know that. Hari boy. Yes, Roji, as you are speaking about such adventures you had into the preaching and you are talking about the IYS preachers also preaching. So we have also heard that when we were in Kirloskar, uh, you used to work for the whole day and the evenings you used to uh, carry prasad, you used to cook the prasad and you used to go for almost every evening you used to go for some programs. So can you share some of those things? How did you have that, you know, how did you come up with a, such a strong missionary spirit although there was any meager facilities to preach? So can you share some stories? Yeah. I think I'm carrying some impressions from my last life. Because I don't think I've consciously gone through any training in this life, but there seems to be some past life force which is pushing things. Because what changed suddenly in my IIT was so sudden and so drastic and so fast that it was beyond my comprehension what exactly is going on. So therefore, in Kirloskar, when we were there, it was not just me, but I was in the association of Radeshyam Prabhu and Sudama Prabhu, all of us were in one flat. So that was even more powerful combination. You can imagine Radeshyam Prabhu at the peak of youth. <laughs> so he was constantly exploding. Right? And Sudama Prabhu was constantly chanting. And I was constantly cooking. <laughs> so Radhesham Prabhu is transcendental. So when I forgot to put salt in the food one day, Sudama Prabhu complained, Are, namak nahi hai. I asked Radhesham Prabhu, how is the food? Bolte, Bahut sattvik hai aaj. <laughs> so he is beyond, you know, all these things, but his focus is only preaching. So in his association, you know, we would go in two cycles. Sudama Prabhu would 
make Radhesh Prabhu sit in the front, in the cycle, and then I would be in another cycle with the prasadam in the back, and we would go to different places and we would try to organize some programs and spread Krishna consciousness. So yes, even I don't know how we got that fire, but it was just like some kind of madness had taken over us. So even in Mumbai, when I came and, you know, I didn't know what to do. I would go to some temple, start pre preaching, go to some college, start preaching. You, 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 you preach in UD City? Uh, so UD City, I started just like that. That 64 number bus goes there. 66, 64, what bus goes to? From Matunga, ICT. Yeah, 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 yeah. 66, 64, yes. Uh, 64, right? So from the Jain temple on the other side, yes, 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 from there I would take the bus. For two years in my program, two boys used to come in UD city. Same two boys. But every week those two will come. And I would beg them, Yar, ek admi ko extra lao. <laughs> ek ko to leke ao. Bol de, ha, 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 Prabhu ji. Next week, again the same two. Same two. But for two years I continued. Then I handed over to Gaur Gopal Prabhu and I, I don't know who else was there. Shikshashtakam Prabhu. Prabhu and, uh, but the good news is those two are both initiated devotees. You know, uh, one is in US and the other became the president of Malawi and now I think he's back in India somewhere, you know. So therefore, we were just looking for opportunity to start spreading Krishna consciousness. And I think all of you, if you just take the opportunity to spend time with two people, three people, even on Sunday feast, after the Sunday program, I would sit from 4 p.m. all the way till 9, 10 o'clock, talking to people, trying to inspire them in Krishna consciousness. So my realization is what ISKCON needs today is small centers, which are not very administrative heavy. Many centers where the Administration is very simple. You just have some cooking happening and then majority of the time is focused on cultivating people. Because after 2001, if I see my last 20 years, majority of my energy and attention and time and Maharajas both has gone in creating and maintaining projects which are finance and administrative heavy. It has its own advantage of attracting a certain kind of people but for the masses you don't really need such sophisticated machinery. So I like the Brahma Kumari's model across Mumbai they have small small places where they are cultivating people. So I think if all of you spend time in cultivating people just like Satyanarayan Prabhu is a great example. He just goes every evening Satyanarayan Prabhu was our classmate from IIT. So he wanted to become Brahmachari, but when his mother was in her last, you know, moments, she uh, expressed her last will that he should get married. So he got married, but his lifestyle is like sadhu only. So he works in the BMC, but in the evening he is out. So that all preaching belt he has created, I think our Leela Ashok Prabhu is here. He also goes in that belt. So very impressive that a lot of people have been cultivated. So I think Mumbai has uh, almost 2 crore people, which is more than many, many countries' population put together. So Mumbai can easily absorb at least 30 to 35 temples without any problem. That much of problem. <laughs> so all of you are young. Some of you will become builders. Some of you will become bureaucrats. Some of you will become politician. So all of you come forward and support ISKCON's efforts in Mumbai or other places and help create new temples because your generation has to do something which previous generation has not done. So remember you are clapping for your own assignment which Gaurang Prabhu has given. <laughs> yes. So we'll move to the next segment of the podcast. Uh, the next phase of the podcast we have decided would be the rapid fire section. So, uh, as Gaurang Prabhu is always ready for rapid fire, so please, Ruji. 
So Prabhu, if you have to have a me time, time with yourself, for one day, which place you like to choose? Vrindavan. What's your favorite, what's your favorite cuisine? Kichidi. <laughs> <laughs> one book which inspired you the most? Srimad Bhagavatam. If I were not to be a monk, I were to be? Bachelor. <laughs> Your favorite section from Shri Ekla Chalo. <laughs> Ekla Chalo Re. <laughs> that was interesting. Satya Gopinath ko bohut achcha laga mera answer. <laughs> Your favorite section from Shri Bhagavatam. Tenth Canto, first to eighth chapter. Lord Krishna's past tense. Your favorite personality, personality from CC. Haridas Thakur. Very good. What is a ISKCON for you in one word? Absorption. Hari. One shloka from Gita which you can relate to the most. Matras Parashas Tukaunte. Hari. Tan Titikshasva Bharata. Tolerate. You tolerate me now. <laughs> <laughs> One quality of Srila Prabhupada that has influenced you the most? Faith in Srila Saraswati Thakur. Haribo! One essential trait you feel every IYS youth must have for a sustainable practice of Krishna Consciousness? Self-control. Haribo! And the last one Prabhuji, what does the IYS means to you? Energy. I have come here to be energized by all of you. So I can al already feel that from the morning till evening, I am going back with a lot of spiritual energy received from all of you. Actually Prabhuji, the energy starts from the higher potential to the lower potential. So we are receiving the, uh, receiving the more energy by your presence and association. So thank your, you. That is your humility. <laughs> Not. <laughs> Nobody will agree here, Prabhuji. <laughs> Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for this association. We are very thankful to you. Thank you. Despite of your busy schedule, you have agreed for this. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.